Enfield 1-1 Taxi. So we got the F5, our trusted F5, and we are going to taxi out of Anapa and see if we can't find any targets for us to attack. Of course, we have uh, a full armament of rockets right here. And uh, our F5 is agile and competent enough to handle most threats. So, we are going to increase speed a little bit. We are going to look so that we do not have any meeting traffic. And... We are currently using the uh, What If Georgian Air Force F5 skin. Basically, it is a bit of a tale of what would happen if uh, the Georgian Air Force would have received F5E Tigers. From Stratford, using 22, arriving runway 22. Okay, so that was an arrival to Anapa. Uh, Clay proclaiming that uh, he was on his way in, so. That's of uh, no concern to us at the moment, since uh, we're still in our taxiing. But we are going to taxi to the far end of the runway, so. We're actually going to pull up the F-10 map, and uh, move the map all the way to an app. Look here, and notice that we will be coming starting at runway 04. So we're gonna adjust our heading a little bit. Once heading is adjusted, we will be making sure that uh, we'll be heading straight for the target. Adjusting heading a little bit there. We still have a, a lot of taxiing to go, two aircraft on the runway. Ford Free, a Harrier, and Chevy One, a uh, Sukhoi 27 round pounder. We also need to keep an eye out for the guy who reported he would be coming in at runway 22, but it might be that he actually returned to the tarmac already. We are less than 10 uh, minutes to take off, so we will be warming up our radar at this point in time. Yeah, I don't have any visual at all at someone approaching this airstrip at this time, so we should actually be good. Enfield 1-1 one, one, uh, takeoff runway 0 4. As you can see, there's only one runway here, but basically the numbers will tell what direction we intend to take off from and since we will be taking off from this part we don't really need the entire field uh, yeah so we're going to light up our sights because that's going to be needed and we are going to increase the sights and brightness so that we can see it clearly and uh, we are now going to close the canopy. It's a little bit a shame I didn't see that there would be a Harrier here, because the Harriers can 
light up targets for us and uh, allow us to use a uh, laser guided bomb. But at this point in time, uh, we do not have sufficient. We didn't, basically do not have any information, and I don't think we actually have the information. And now the frog foot is also moving. So basically, we are a lot of ground pounders, and I don't think we have enough fighter escorts for this one. So I'm just gonna check once more that the runway is clear, and I am going to turn on to runway zero. A little bit of an increase on gas. We'll allow the Harrier to take up position next to us. Uh, the Frogfoot can wait. Full brakes, full brakes, full brakes. We'll wait for the afterburner. Afterburner, afterburner, afterburner. Oh god, uh, we are drifting far too much here. We should not be drifting on the runway this much, but uh, at least we got a head start from the Harrier, so we should be fine on that. We are not going to collide with anyone. So let's. And I forgot to uh, make the nose wheel extra bouncy as well, so. But we made it off the ground. Oh, and of course, we actually forgot our air brakes out as well. That's just sweet. We should not have forgotten our air brakes out that way. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is uh, we need to hide our pilot. We're gonna pull up a bit. We're gonna check fuel because right now our right fuel tank have uh, more fuel than the left one. So we're gonna switch our auto balance to draw more fuel from. Then we are going to activate our rocket pods. Make sure that everything is armed. Right now our rocket pods are armed. And lastly we're gonna make sure that our countermeasures are in order and we are also going to move up our our flaps so basically this little thing takes a little bit more to fly than the vegan it's a bit more button pressing once you made it up to the ground but the workload is not all that bad The Harrier seems to have gotten itself weighed down with a lot of smart weapons. Uh, there seems to be an attack pattern right here. And a FOP that we might need to capture. So we are going to head over there at best, uh, best subsonic speed basically. We can also have a little bit, uh, our target will be beyond Krimsk, so that works out for us. And Frol is fine. These guys are also very clear, which is a very, actually a pretty good thing, since uh, worst case scenario, someone fires Sam at us, I want to see it. The nice thing is that unlike the Vigan, I can actually uh, fly this thing without a countermeasure pod. Uh, I have countermeasures built into the aircraft, I just don't have many of them. I have like 15, uh, 15 flares and 30 chaff.
that's actually something I should register, make sure that uh, we deploy the chaff, but not the flares. We have contact with something subterranean over there. Uh, apparently the subterranean is a friendly. An F-18 who's ba- oh wait, there he is. Basically, I get the feeling he's lagging out or something like that. Yeah, he's lagging like hell. Poor guy. So, in order to make the rockets truly effective, we need to depress our sight to about 14. And we are also going to switch the gun sight mode to... Uh, Manual. There we go. Also, check fuel. Uh, we are balancing out our fuel tanks, so we can basically have both our uh, fuel tanks share the load equally now. And now it's time to start thinking about where we're flying. So basically, we should be trying to head to the enemy FOP. That's 094. So we're gonna take our little computer here and dial it to 094. We're basically dead on that course, but ba what this thing does is that it shows us where uh, we can expect the target to be. Uh, right now there is actually an A-10C in the vicinity. Uh, so, uh, SE FARP needs to be captured. Enfield 1 rolling in SE FARP. We should always take a look at the chat log and stuff like that for the simple reason that uh, sometimes people don't use SRS, instead they basically decide that they should be chatting instead. The target should be dead ahead and hopefully there will be smoke from the... Yes, our guns are active, guns are active. You can see that the guns are active due to these little things popping up close to the gun barrels. Once they pop up, uh, we are basically clear to fire. I'm gonna keep an eye out for that A-10 as well, make sure that we do not engage the same targets. The A-10 is already on its way in, rolling in on the target. There's also a secondary target behind it, uh, but that's a SAM site. Uh, SAM site Archangel. We don't want to mess with that. So we're gonna try and stay on our side of the turf. Sadly, I managed to remove the marker for that SAM site, which is frankly just stupid. So we're going to go a little bit lower. And have a look here. Adjust course a little bit. I still don't see that A10 though. Uh, that's a bit worrying. Because uh, I think I might have. No, not enough actually. Ah, I see it. Tally Warfog. Let's see if there are, are any active targets left here. I'm not actually sure about that. Someone just launched a BK, either a CPU or a BK-90. There are trucks right there. Assume hostile. If not hostile, they may serve the enemy someday. Fire. God damn it, we missed them.
Okay, so basically the enemy might have been civilian trucks and not actually enemy trucks, but... You know, um, trucks are in the target area might as well be enemy. So I don't see that we did anything wrong. We are rolling in again. I can see the F-10 right above me, right there. Once I have the location of the pad, we are rolling in again. I got it. Basically, the... Uh, a oh, crap, something is actually shooting at me. There's an active target. Okay, so we're gonna avoid that. Try and come in straight across. And see if we can't get that thing. Uh, let's see. It should be next to the road. There we have it. Let's see if we... Yeah, I can see it now. I don't have an angle. God damn it. Climb, climb, climb. God damn it. The Russians do not want to play with us today. They basically just tell me to go away. Alright, let's see if we can't make a bit of a better rocket attack here. Gain some altitude. And dive. Any tank that basically does not have is a charred husk is our target. From stressing QZ22, departing We actually got a tank. Nice! Alright, so let's see about blasting some more of those tanks, yeah? Oh god, someone's popping flares, that's not a good thing. Eject pods, eject pods. Find whatever's popping those flares. Looks like it's what the uh, eight. Which air combat mode? Oh god damn it, they're firing on us. That might be a missile launch at us. Stay low, stay low, stay low. Activate flares. Yeah, uh, I think I think that's a bogey. Tally flanker, tally flanker. Okay, let's see if uh, we can do this. I have the flanker. Come on, let's do this. Let's do this. 
Shooter Fox 2. God damn it. I said shooter. Oh, wait. That's why. Come on. God damn it. Switch to radar. I said radar. I want the dogfight mode on now. Come on. Shooter Fox 2. We should hopefully have a good clean hit on that guy. Depending on distance, of course. I might have actually waited far too... Not waited long enough shooting at the guy. Well, he's braking at any rate, so there's something. Oh, our burners are not active. Come on, I need those burners now. Let's get this guy. Yeah, burners are active. I think we can get this guy now. Let's close in with guns. And of course we need to change to AA mode 2. God damn it! I overshot the bastard. And G-forces. God damn it! This is... This is gonna hurt. Yeah, that did not end well for me. God damn it. But at the same time, I'm a bit miffed because... Uh, I'm actually... Uh, I've messed up with the guns. But I'm fairly certain I did not mess up with the with the with the missiles. I'm fairly certain I was actually in range. But uh, you can never be so completely sure about it. At any rate, you might want to notice that the uh, Su-10 and the A-10 that we went in to assist are still alive, so there's that. Of course, with uh, the Harrier seems to have bought it, but I'm still pretty pleased with the outcome of that, even if uh, the J-11 turned out to be more than I bargained for.